Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, this is embarrassing. The Nostalgia Critic on the Nerd DVD. You're probably wondering what the hell I'm doing here. Well, you see, we had a little bet a while ago. I bet that the nerd wouldn't be able to make his gigantic opus, let alone get it on DVD or show it in a bunch of theaters to tons of people. Obviously, I lost. So, he gave me one of two options. Either do a review of the movie, or be whipped like a horse pulling him down the streets of Chicago with a sign on me saying I'm a fatty fatty fuck fuck. It was a tough call! Let's get this over with. Remember that bunch of kids in high school who said they wanted to make movies? Remember how they used to show you all their films they worked so hard on? Remember how no matter what you were always so impressed with how they put all their passion and all their love into every single frame they shot? And despite all the dedication that they put into every single frame, didn't you just hate those fucking films? The lame effects, the hokey acting, the stories that made no sense whatsoever. Well, the world loves to reward the insane, and this is the fruit of their labor. Hey, you paid for it, so it only makes sense that you should pay for it. Let's not wait another second. Let's take a look at the NERD! The movie. We start off with a backstory about the world's most hated video game. Spin-off, which is in no way related to the world's actual most hated video game. We swear! This is when they produced a game based on the highest grossing film of that year, Steven Spielberg's E.T. The end result was a strange and incoherent game that alienated devoted gamers. Well, no wonder they couldn't even get the character's color right or spell his name correctly. It was two letters. How could you fuck that up? Will fans be eager to buy a game based off of such a reputation, even though the new version will be better? It won't be better. We'll make it even worse. Highly Research irregular. shows gamers these days are playing games they hate. They think bad is the new good. Consequently, we'll cut our expenses and double our profits. And internet critics will make thousands off of them. Dad's puppets, dad's <laughs> I mean, uh, <clears throat> you monsters. But how will they convince people to play it? All by using needless profanity's holy grail, as a montage happens showing all of his fans praising the nerd's work. A custom t-shirt right here. Well, who else can you think of that actually cuddles up with the AVGN plush doll? I got a angry video game nerd tattoo. I got that immortalized in ink. Ha! That's nothing. Take a look at the fan videos I get all the time. Hey, critic, remember that fight with the nerd we were all angry at originally? When are you gonna do another one of those? But it turns out the nerd has a real life. Yeah, wouldn't you expect that from someone whose legal name is apparently nerd? He works at a video game store, has an angry boss who yells at him. He even has a quirky black sidekick. You gotta make some unique sacrifices. No physical fitness, no social popularity. No bad green screening, no claiming you're filming this for an album that confusingly makes no sense. The album's gonna be good. And most importantly, no starring in early 2000s sitcoms or directed DVD Disney sequels. The exploiting of IMDB must flow. But sure enough, a lot of cameos come into the store requesting the nerd review the original E.T. Or, as I should pronounce it, E.T. -E. You know what? I heard that Atari recall all of the cartridges. No, no, I already have a quirky black psychic. Call me if you can get me a Ninja Turtle, preferably one that's been in the Brady Bunch. It must flow. A representative from Cockburn Inc. Yeah, that's really the name. Comes in to tell him about their plan to review E.E.T. -E. He doesn't take it well. Oh my god, I've never seen so much green vomit come out of one person's hand. Oh, except that one time. Yeah, that was weird. He obviously says no, but has a dream that night to help improve trailer fodder. Like, look! Zombies! Look, there's zombies in the movie, everybody! You like zombies, right? The nerd fights zombies. We can put that on the poster somewhere. I do realize that Bear McCreary, who did the music, didn't use the Walking Dead theme for a scene that had zombies, but at least he played a zombie in there. Does that count? No, it doesn't! I want an apology, Mr. Creary! It's C minor! I don't think you meant it. Whoa! 
we're going to find that landfill and prove that there's nothing under there. So he agrees that if they do find any games under there, he'd review them. But Cooper says they need proper equipment. Which brings in the representative, named Mandy, back onto the scene. I also really don't like the idea of bringing this girl with us. Relax, no, she's our producer. And she's not a girl, she's a gamer. Yeah, what? Everything all right over there? The fans need you more than ever, nerd. So the road trip is on as Mandy keeps her team updated on her progress. Don't get too close to these nerds. They are the product. Don't worry, Mr. Cockburn. They're just a couple of dorks. And I'm not just saying that to reinforce the irony that they're going to win me over with their charm, because as this movie has clearly shown, they have none. Was it going to turn to Huntress Thompson by the time the movie's over? We were somewhere in New Mexico, the middle of the desert. When the dumb began to take hold. But evil... Evilness is keeping a close eye on them as they're apparently getting too close to their secret operation. And take care of this. All the facts and prove what is there. Good lord, he's harnessing the power of Mattel's missile command! That's a little excessive. Sir. Maybe you're right. Oh, thank Jesus, we almost lost an entire toenail to one of those. Goddamn terrorist alien hunters. As they send out a crew to investigate, Team Exposition discusses a mythical creature so strange and so not having anything to do with what's going on at the moment. Santa Claus is real. Well, we probably believe the world is flat. The world is flat. What about heaven and hell? Believe in that? Yeah, that all comes down to the cyber mutant death god living under Mount Fuji. He created both God and Satan. Oh, come on! I can't see anything past your foreshadowing! And thus, we have our monster so grand and so terrifying that you'll be yelling all throughout the film, How do you say his name again? Death Mothix. Death Mothix? Death Mothix. Death Momsick? Death Mothix. Dick Mothix? Death Mothix. So be afraid! Coming to destroy your city is... <laughs> Marketing must have loved you. With a single turn of the satellite dish on top of his head, every universe in the multiverse will disappear. Non-existence. No space. Nothing. Nope. Well, one thing would remain. A bologna sandwich. Why a bologna sandwich, you might ask? Because bologna's a funny word. He could have just as easily said cabbage, banana, or like titty cock. None of it would have changed the story. Well, banana might. But hell, for the sake of canon and to keep in the theme of the movie, the reason only a bologna sandwich would be left in the universe is... Cockapus! I don't know what it is, but hey, if they can make up a story for... I'm sure I can make up one for that, too. But the military comes in to arrest them. It's the buzz! We don't have a permit. I want to make a run for it. Hey, it's how shooting for most of the movie went. Get me the fuck out of here! And that's the line most uttered on the set. Are you sure they didn't just forget to turn the camera off during certain scenes? Hands on the vehicle. All right, all right, honey. Don't get your panties in a wad. <gasps> I'm not wearing any panties. Well, I'm sure you just made a preferred little five-year-old boy's sexual fantasy come true. But the general accidentally blows up his arm. Just a flesh wound. And they escape through a car chase. Ah! What the hell is that? Fruit, sir. Did you see the size of those melons? Take a note, McButter. <laughs> well, I'm sure you just made a perverted little four-year-old boy sexual fantasy come true. They outrun them and decide to go searching for the person who designed the original E.T.E. game. But they find the place is full of poorly rendered booby traps. Hey, as long as it's not as hard as the original Japanese Mario Bros. 2, you'll be alright. They don't find the creator per se, but a man named Mr. Zandor, a scientist who used to work at Area 51. Did you know the Atari logo was based off Mount Fuji? I always found that odd. Well, how may I help you? God, this foreshadowing is just as well woven in as a basket with two holes in it. When that sucker crashed in the desert, it broke up like one of those clay pigeons in Duck Hunt. There was metallic debris all over the desert. Or Debris. No, it's debris. Well, there's an S. Why isn't it pronounced Debris? I don't know. How come you always say bury instead of bury? We need to bury it in the past where it belongs. It's one R. 
He explains how an alien ship did crash into Area 51 and that the secret to how to get inside is hidden within E.T. On top of that, an innocent alien life is still kept in captivity. Ooh, we have an alien now too, huh? Jeez, don't people ever get bored of all this Area 51 nonsense? Yeah, hard to believe seeing how the nerd hasn't come across any strange aliens or monsters in the past. For now, make yourselves at home. There are video games upstairs. So the team just sort of... takes it easy for a bit, I guess. I suppose if I found out aliens were real, I'd just play on the power pad or reflect filming lights off of my glasses, too. <laughs> Amateurs. But when trying to get a better reception, Mandy gets caught, but promises to take them to Xandor's house. Of course, leading them to all the funniest places they could take pictures of and green screen in later. Girl, man, we have to ditch her. I thought she's a gamer, not a girl. She's not a gamer. These are phony prescription glasses with fake plastic lenses. It was all an act, don't you understand? She's bait. Why would she do this? To appear more nerdy. By God, there really are fake gamer girls. Every internet troll who's never had sex before is right. Congratulations! Yay! And you still never had sex! Oh. But word gets around about the nerd's journey and people form a huge gathering around the landfill populated by all the leftover cameos that couldn't be fit in anywhere else. Fellow gamers, may I have your attention? When the nerd tries to tell them it's all bullshit, lo and behold, the designer of E.T.E. himself comes in. Howard Scott Warshaw. I've seen your videos. I know you are a frank and honest man. People like us, we don't cover things up. Wouldn't this be a better world if people told the truth? If a lot of people learn to tell the truth, the world would be a better place to live. The truth, nerd. That is what you must find. There goes the best and yet somehow worst video game designer of all time. He'll most likely get a job at EA Games. But the nerd still thinks he can debunk the myth, so he gets dressed up in worse effects than... Well, the movies, I guess. And manages to not so subtly sneak his way in. I fall! It's my thing! Sure enough, the inside looks just like the video game, and he gets himself caught. So it's revealed that Xandor replaced all the space metal with tinfoil. Because of this, the general decides to blow up Mount Fuji. I'm surprised you don't see the connection there. So long, nerd, and thank you for telling the truth. Oh. Damn fool! Don't you know that duct tape cardboard doors lightly pushed together are the strongest things in the world? Damn fool! But it looks like the alien escapes and helps the nerd do so as well. I thought you were just a hoax. Yeah, we get a lot of that around here. Clearly his race is so advanced that their mouths don't even have to close to form audible words. Sure enough, Tim Puff is finally released, looking as evil as a ceramic Tim Curry fucking a ceramic Dr. Octopus. You know, can you imagine actually asking for a tank in this shoot? No, really! We just want to tell a story about a video game puppet who has to stop a bigger video game puppet, all coming from an internet series I shot in my basement! Fuck no! Well, we'll half out ladies hitting each other! Oh, okay. So, Tiff flies around the globe destroying the Earth. Or practices destroying the play size mud over before actually destroying the real thing. God, I see more carnage out of a toddler destroying his Happy Meal toy. In fact, are you sure that's not what I'm watching? But McButter agrees to challenge Mandy to a fight because... Again, they had to get that tank somehow, and they partake in chick-on-chick -chick martial arts. Now I thought I could get through this without objectifying myself in a sexy cat fight. But it looks like that's impossible now. Just because you say you're doing it doesn't make it any better. Did you see that? Jeez, the nerd turned into a bit of a puss in that line. Whoa, did you see that? They almost hurt my manicure. The pieces to the ship! They're inside the ET games! But the alien calls all the video game cartridges to him to rebuild his ship. This leads to easily, hands down, 
the best performance in the entire movie. Look at the fear in his eyes. Look at the depth he's portraying. Look at how many emotions this actor is able to get across in just a couple of seconds. He may have only had one moment of screen time, but he changed cinema with it. <laughs> Duh, indeed. Mandy defeats McButter only to be captured again. But it's okay, Cooper helps save the nerd only to be captured again. God, you could just call this film getting captured the movie. There's more people being bound up in this film than Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Aw, Mandy looks so adorably plastic while screaming in distress. <laughs> Sure enough, the nerd comes to save the day and catches Cooper and Mandy. They try to destroy the satellite and just put this head, which ultimately results in this. <laughs> you want me to explain? No. Uh -uh. Brought to you by the miracle of randomness. Like the saying goes, if you don't get it, cockapus. There, I finally put it to some good use! Or at least better use than the bologna sandwich. Seriously, what was that again? And of course, having saved the day, Mandy gets together with her obvious love interest in the movie, okay. Cooper. Because clearly they were setting that up! Hey, I guess if you can survive being a metal tentacle hentai, you can pretty much bond over anything. And as you'd expect, the ending credits is a review of the game. Which even then isn't really as major as you'd expect. So, is it really the worst game of all time? Um, I don't think so. It's frustrating, it's challenging, and it's a brain teaser, but that's what makes it so addicting. And considering it was made in such a short period of time, it's more sophisticated than anything of its era. Ah yes, the greatest bad game of all time, reviewed by the greatest video game critic of all time, and the final epic conclusion is... Eh? Actually, to the nerd's credit, that's the only reaction he could give that wouldn't be obvious. If he screamed and yelled and took a shit on it, we'd all know it'd be coming, but a reaction like that is kind of unexpectedly refreshing. Hell, he might even get a lot of people to kind of agree with him on it. <laughs> now, if only I could get that same amount of people to agree with me on Last Action here. Uh, it's bullshit! It's terrible satire! See you later! And remember, forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza! And that's the movie, and... It's your movie. Everything you wanted to see is here. The review of the game, the nerd being the nerd, effects fake but impressively practical. The homage to millions of geeky films from Godzilla to fucking Ninja Turtles 3. You pretty much got exactly what was to be expected. But that doesn't mean I like it. It just means I don't. Not. Not. Not like it. But with that said, everyone has been asking me after this movie came out, Nostalgia Critic, are you ever going to do a movie? Are you ever going to do a film that's going to be released in theaters and all that bullshit? Well, there's another reason that I did this review for this DVD. Yeah, that's right. Right here, right now, on the nerd's turf, I am happy to announce that I, the Nostalgia Critic, am going to release an official Nostalgia Critic movie! Oops.